What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today we are opening up a very special pack of Modern Masters 2017 edition. Uh, this is obviously the third and the final installment in the Modern Masters saga. Uh, these are really, really overpowered packs usually. Uh, so I'm hoping that we get something really awesome. There are a lot of really, really good value draws in this set. Uh, but of course we'll do our normal thing where we figure out what our pack one pick one will also be. Uh, and I did draft a little bit of this set, uh, not a ton, but it was a lot of fun to play. So hopefully uh, I have some actual useful insight for you. So uh, our first card here is Demil Demir, excuse me, Guildgate. Uh, it does enter the battlefield tapped, but it does tap for blue or black. Uh, Guildgates are perfectly serviceable uh, and limited. They help you splash your colors, and this does kind of force you into two and maybe even three colors in some cases. Uh, so I do like this card. It's not uh, something that you want to pick up early, but if you're in the colors, it's definitely worth picking up. And in a situation where you don't really have another good, like, playable pick, uh, if the Guildgate, no matter which one it is, is in one of your colors, it's really useful to pick that up. That way, you have the option to splash stuff later on in the pack. Uh, Augur Spree is an instant for one a black and a red. Target creature gets plus four, minus four until end of turn. I really, really like this card. Uh, it's great as a removal spell. It is pretty efficient. Uh, three mana for instant speed, uh, minus four is pretty solid. Yes, you do have to be in two colors, but again, with the Guild Gates as well as some other fixing, it's really not too difficult to actually get there. Uh, and honestly, in a really tight spot, there this is a bit more of a corner case, but if you're uh, swinging in with a big creature and you need to deal the last few points of damage, you can always just tie this onto it and hopefully win the game that way. Uh, so it does kind of give you that as an out. Uh, granted, you most often will use this as a removal spell, which I do really like. So definitely looking at that. Uh, Core Sky Fisher is a 2-3 for one and a white. It does have flying and when it enters the battlefield, return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. Uh, so there is kind of a flicker uh, bounce deck in this. Uh, I believe it's the blue-white deck. If I'm not mistaken, that would make the most sense. Uh, and so this goes really, really well in that deck. Uh, it's a really good two drop for flying. It's a two, three for only two. Uh, and yes, technically it looks like it has the downside of returning a permanent to your hand. Ideally, you're gonna be able to use that as an upside though. Uh, and so I really, really like this card. It's a very powerful two drop, one that you would want to take. Uh, though probably, in my opinion, I would take the Augur Spree first. Uh, I like that card a little more, uh, but I could definitely see an argument for this. Uh, Deputy of Equi Equ Acquittals, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a two two for a white and a blue. It does have flash, so you can play it at instant speed. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you may return another target creature you controlled to its owner's hand. Again, very similar to the Sky Fisher, uh, but what the upside with this is that you can play it at instant speed. So if somebody targets a spell or a creature of yours uh, with removal, you can just play this in, in response, bounce it, uh, and then the removal spell just fizzles. So there's a lot of really good cases where this is going to be powerful. Uh, it is just a 2-2 two -two for 2, so it's a little underpowered in comparison to the Sky Fisher, uh, but still very, very good. I'll be honest though, I still like the Augur Spree above both of these cards. Uh, granted, they are both very, very good. Uh, Recover is a sorcery for two and a black. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand and then also draw a card. These abilities are actually very, very useful to have. Uh, a lot of times this will come in handy because you'll be able to pull back uh, either a really key card that your opponent had to use a removal spell on uh, or just a bomb that you need to finish the game with. On top of that, you do get to draw a card. So it is actually just replacing itself just on the face of it anyway. Uh, it is sorcery speed, so you're not gonna be able to do that instant uh, on your opponent's turn or anything like that. But for three mana, this does a lot. Uh, this is something that I would pick up late pack. I would not pick this up super early. Uh, you're gonna be able to find more of these, so I do like it though. Uh, Seal of Primordium. Uh, is one and a green for an enchantment, sacrifice it, and destroy target artifact or enchantment. This is a really classic effect of naturalize on an enchantment is basically what this is. Uh, and I really like it. It's good to have as a sideboard card. It's not something you want to pick up early by any means, but definitely something that you'll want uh, if you're in a green deck. Uh, Mortician Beetle is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, you may, uh, you may put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Beetle. Uh, this is a really long-term game plan. It's a perfectly serviceable 1-drop regardless, uh, and there are sacrifice outlets, so it's worth it if you're in that deck. I generally don't like this. I found it to be a little bit underwhelming, uh, and so for me, not super interested. 
Uh, Ghostly Flicker is an instant for two and a blue. Exile two target artifacts, creatures, and or lands you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under your control. Uh, again, really playing into that flicker bounce effect. Uh, this is a really good card for that deck. It's instant speed and only three mana. Uh, it does bounce two things as well, so you get two, uh, hopefully to enter the battlefield abilities off of this uh, or any other synergies that you can find. I really like this card. Uh, I don't think I'd take it over the Augur's three, but it is good. Uh, Thunderous Wrath is an instant for four and two red, uh, and yes, that does sound very expensive, but it does deal five damage to target creature or player, which is huge, and you can miracle this uh, for only one red. So uh, you can cast this for its miracle cost when you draw it if it's the first card you drew this turn. Uh, that's very, very key, obviously. Uh, you There are ways to kind of control your draws a little bit, but in your like opening hand or something like that, this is actually kind of bad. Uh, six mana to deal five is not really where you want to be, though I will say five, five damage is a lot. You may be able to just finish the game off with it. I don't know if this is better than Augur Spree. Uh, it's easier to cast technically uh, because you're not having to splash uh, black by any means. And so it keeps you a little more open, which I do like. Uh, and it is, if you, ideally, if you can miracle it, it only is one red, which is super cheap. So I'm going to keep it here for now. We'll see what else we get. Uh, Graceful Reprieve is an instant for one in a white. Uh, when target creature dies this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. I don't really like cards like this. Uh, it's very similar to cards that it, it's just kind of a type of card that saves uh, whatever creature you already have out. And I'd rather this be an actual creature that I'd like to play in replacement of that creature. So not a huge fan of this. Uh, really these effects in general really don't like. They're a bit of a trap in my opinion for newer players. Uh, and so for me, not the kind of card that I would draft. Uh, Intangible Virtue is an enchantment for one in a white. Creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one, and have Vigilance. This is a very narrow card. Obviously, you need token generators to make this good, but if you have them, this is a huge, huge card for that deck. This is very, very paramount for it. Uh, you want as many of these as you can honestly get. They're only two mana, so it's not like you're taking a really important turn off to cast it. Uh, and the long-term value off of this is just insane. Uh, and so... I wouldn't take this early only because I'd rather have the token generators first. The token generators work regardless of whether or not you have this card. This card doesn't work unless you have token generators, so you really want to get the token generators first. So do really, really like this. Very key card, very powerful card. Wouldn't want it super early. Uh, Gruel Signet is an artifact for two mana. You can pay one and tap it to add red and green to your mana pool. Uh, the Signets are all really, really good. Um, in certain strategies, they're better than others. Uh, obviously, on two mana in Gruel, you probably just want to be playing like threats on board, like creatures. Uh, and so for me, I wouldn't pick this too early. Uh, these are also a little more powerful. A lot of people think they're hugely powerful, but that's mostly because they've seen them played in like old school cubes. Uh, they're really good there because there's artifact synergies, not just uh, the color synergy. Uh, they are ramped though, so it is worth noting. Uh, there are instances where you'll want to take these, and so I like them. They're fine. Uh, wouldn't take it too early though. Uh, Wooly Thokter is a vanilla 5-4 for a red, a green, and a white. Again, pushing into that three color strategy that I mentioned at the beginning of the pack. Uh, it is a vanilla creature, but for only three mana, you are getting a 5-4. Pretty powerful if you're in that color combination. I do not recommend taking a three color card first, uh, unless it's just absolutely uh, over the top powerful. Now this is very powerful. It's very, very good for a three drop, but in limited, it's going to be really difficult to reliably get all three colors on turn three. Uh, obviously things like rule signet can help you there. Uh, and so it's worth it. Maybe if you do kind of end up in that three color strategy to pick up stuff like rule signet. Uh, but in general, do not like first picking a card like this. It is good, but I'm not in those colors yet. And I don't want to pigeonhole myself too early. Uh, and finally, our rare here is Simic Sky Swallower. So it's a 6-6 six, six for five, a green and a blue. It does have flying and trample and shroud. So it can't be the target of spells or abilities, period. This is not hexproof. Uh, so the difference here meaning hexproof, you can actually still target it with spells or abilities. Uh, shroud, it, it literally just can't be the target of anything. Uh, it's really, really powerful, very, very difficult to deal with. Definitely uh, the pick, in my opinion. Oh, we do have, of course, uh, a foil. Forgot about that. We have Vanish into Memory. 
an instant for two a white and a blue exile target creature you draw cards equal to that creature's power uh, at the beginning of your next upkeep return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control and if you do discard cards equal to that creature's toughness again this is a really powerful card uh, in that blink strategy we saw a number of cards for that strategy uh, but it is not more powerful than the Simic Sky Swallower, which is very clearly, in my opinion, the pick. Uh, it is a gold card, so it's going to be a little bit harder to, like, it's going to be easy to pigeonhole yourself is the best way I can put it. But it is very, very good. It's a huge payoff, so it's definitely my pick. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And if you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.